Good afternoon, everyone. So what we're gonna be starting here is another addition to our four A's as to why your knees suck. So we're starting here with our back leg hip car, split stance hip car. Now, what we're trying to do here is keep that leg nice and straight and lock that heel into the ground, lock your hamstring, lock your glute on the down leg. And now I'm trying to bring my knee up into my hip crease, flex my toe up, keep my abs on, work into my glute, work into my upper hip crease, and trying to maintain my ab positioning while I do so. I'm trying to flex my glute all the way out of the, all the way to the ground and flex my knee down to the ground, keep trying to pull my heel to my hamstring here. And then at the end, I'm going to finish with this quad extension, flexing the glute, flexing the hamstring, trying to get everything squeezed down to the ground here. And I'm going to try to control it on the way back. And we're going to return to our midline here. Now, when you're bringing this knee up initially, I'm trying to turn both everything towards the center here and maintain as strict of a midline as I can. Not letting my knees bow out to the side, not letting my knees come away from my, the line of my sternum here. Trying to make sure I'm using my adductor, using my hip flexor, using my obliques and abdomen properly to bring this up and breathing into the hip crease while I keep that bottom leg locked. And keeping the hamstring on here and trying to, if this looks, kind of looks very similar to the bottom of your squat position here. Now, understanding these ranges is going to be really important when you're in a heavy squat. And yeah, you may not be in this extreme degree of external rotation here, but it's going to give you a little bit of bumper room in that hip capsule and in that range and being able to be actively mobile in positions you normally previously would be hurt in. Now, this is important to be able to control our ranges where we get used to flexing in and out of position because that's where our true motor control patterns come from. The next thing we're going to be working into here is our single leg toe squat with an eccentric focus. So now I'm using this bottom leg here as a little bit of a guide on my way down, but I'm trying to get used to maintaining that internal knee rotation right over top of the middle of the arch, keep my arch nice and built and pull myself down to my butt with my left hamstring. Now I'm trying to really pull myself down here and trying to make sure I pull into position, keep the abs on, and then I'm gonna return back up to the start by using that same leg. Now we're gonna be working into a little bit more of a progression here, trying to hold an isometric contraction with the opposite hamstring on the way up in the next pattern. But you see this one here, it's getting used to working through your ankles, getting used to working through your knees and hips, understanding your adductors, understanding your abdominals, understanding, oh, my ankle just rolled in a little bit. I need to work on building my feet up. So it's kind of a walk around the block with how our body's feeling. And you understand, oh, my knee isn't that great in that position. Or, hey, I need to work on this position. Or maybe I need to work on some of this ankle stuff or foot stuff here to make my knee feel better. Or the thing that's been bugging me for the last decade. Our second, th our last one we're gonna be working on here is so still another variation of this here, except what I'm trying to do is pull both legs down to the ground. I'm trying to slowly pull on the trail leg down to the hamstring without losing the toes. And this is the hardest part here is making sure that you're pulling equally through both hamstrings and adductors. And once you get to the ground, trying to pin that trail leg heel to your butt and pin that hamstring in place, stand up with the front leg and not lose the trail hamstring. Now, starting to be able to lock this hamstring into place and have it do something while the other leg is kind of doing something a little contradicting here becomes a little more important in running and walking in a lot of our lifts. One muscle needs to be able to do something while its accompanying part is doing something else and vice versa. A lot of times I've seen we get a lot of things happening down the road here. We get a lot of overuse injuries and we get a lot of misfiring injuries and knee, ankle, and foot pain. So understanding how to control your forward and backward ranges is very important. And also working into your active ranges of motion, not just trying to jam yourself into a position. Where can you go and come back from safely without any pain? All right, guys, give these a try and let me know what you think.